Yes, it does not dishonor others. Agreed. Okay. It does not change over time either. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, that got derailed. Well, to, to be fair, to be fair, there are certain things from the Old Testament that do change. Not, I'm not talking about laws. I'm talking about like, let's just say, we'll, we'll pull up Isaiah 42, 11. I think it's 42 or 43, 11, where it says, you know, uh, I share my glory with no one. But obviously, as Christians within the New Covenant, um, what, what's said is now we share the glory of Jesus Christ himself, which would be the glory of God. Oy vey. So, so there are technically changes, Oy but vey. are there abrogations to Yahweh's uh, 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 person? His, his actual standard, is it a standard that he, he shares his glory with no one? At that time, he wasn't doing that. He actively said he wasn't doing that. But now there is a change. It's the new covenant where he's. What's new about the new covenant, covenant Skippy? Right. What's new about the new covenant, Skippy? Please don't be disrespectful to people. Okay, I'm so, sorry. He disrespected so, my king when he said he changed the law when he did. This man so, is a Christian. He's not what's disrespectful. What's new about the new covenant, Skippy? Okay, Mr. Batman, I said, I said I'm not talking about the law. This has nothing to do with the law. This has to do this with to do. what Yahweh said <laughs> in the covenant. Old Testament, in Isaiah. He covenant. said that I share my glory with no one, <laughs> but different. in the New Covenant. And this, 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 this the is Old Covenant, covenant. Different, different from the New Covenant, sir. Uh, we, we share the glory of the second person of the Trinity. You are a lion sack of crap. You are an idolater. You're on your way to hell. Have a nice day, Skippy. Wait, I, I'm an idolater because I say we share the glory of the second person of the Trinity. And this is how we're actually justified before okay, God. We okay, have peace with okay. God through this. I don't want to get derailed by Batman here. Uh, we're talking <laughs> with uh, Ardberg. Ardberg? Ardberg. Well, two things I Ardberg. want to say here. First hey, of all, Ard Ardberg is uh, Ardberg asked for okay, a guys. standard. Of Keep some money. Keep 2000. This is too. I'm sorry. I'm how my Can I'm I sorry. not be heard? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Keep going. We can hear you. I was just how my king. Sorry. Ardbeg asked for uh, a standard from the New Testament that says not to use profanity. Ephesians 5 4 says not to use profanity. It was written by an apostle of Jesus Christ, Paul, so it says not to use profanity. Uh, that's one of the many places where Paul directs us not to use profanity. So that's there. Another thing, uh, just so people know, the uh, writings of the uh, prophets are not actually the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant, according to Hebrews, is the uh, system of sacrificing animals for the forgiveness. That's no. made very clear in uh, <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5. Exodus 19, verses 5 and 6. That's the covenant. Okay, well, that's uh, a strange way of looking at it. I, I cited uh, Hebrews 5 to demonstrate that. And I cited... God's word, where it says that if you keep my commandments, that is the covenant. This is the covenant. He even says that if you will do this, I will be your God. You will be my people and you will be a treasured possession. That's the covenant. And part of that sign of the covenant is Sabbath and what you put in your mouth. Well, let me ask you something, Mr. Batman. Do you believe that's been done away with? Hell no. Okay, I didn't think you thought it had been. Um, and in Hebrews uh, chapter 5, it says the Old Covenant has been done away with. It's been made obsolete. No, sir, it, does not, it does not say that. It says, sir, that now why would, why would it come? Okay, is there why a reason you're not letting me speak here? Yeah, be, feel free to mute him if, you wanna, if you're trying to say something. Obsolete, sir? So it Since actually that, does say in the book of Hebrews that uh, the Old Covenant has been been made old, it is passing away, and it has been done away with. And uh, it's you're very a lion clear. sack of crap. Don't insult you know, people in this panel. Perfect. Do not it insult people. Been... Do not insult people in this VC. You're not allowed to do that, sir. 
Okay, so it's very clear that the Old Covenant it's talking about that has been done away with. Now, most Christians believe that is the Torah, and of course, it's not the Torah. It is the system of sacrificing animals for the forgiveness of sin. That's what's been done away with. And uh, so what you're talking about as the covenant is not the old covenant that is spoken of in Hebrews. It's actually the system of animal sacrifices. Yeah, I, I didn't talk about, so I, I, I talked about the covenant. I didn't talk about the law. And that's, that's what I was saying earlier is I, I mentioned nothing of the law. I actually spoke out intermediately and said, uh, and I'm not talking about the law. And then I proceeded to say, I'm talking about what we did uh, an ordinance in which God says something about himself, something true of himself. I share my glory with no one. And what do we see in the New Testament? What makes it particular? What makes it better? We share the glory of the second person of the Trinity. And that's where we're at now. Now we're, I, I don't know how somebody, uh, Mr. Babin, you, I think you misinterpreted what I was saying. You thought I was actually saying that a law was abrogated, and I'm talking about within this new covenant, there's something particular, something that Yahweh has said in the past that is no longer true now. Yeah, let's not get lost on the, like the details. What's the overall point? You're like, wh where are we getting at? You're getting somewhere with Arberg, right? Uh, well, he was saying. I, I, I said that in response to, I think, Mr. Batman, because he was saying things of the Old Testament are not changed now. There's nothing new now, but there are, in fact, new things like a new covenant, particularly, and that uh, we share this, we share the glory of the second person of the Trinity. That's not something that happens in the Old Testament, especially now. God puts his spirit inside people rather than on them like Saul. Rather than putting his spirit on kings and blessing them, and uh, this is how uh, uh, God worked within the world, he now puts his spirit within people. So this is, this is the new part. <laughs> this is what makes the, co the, the new covenant better. Arbeg? Sorry, what? Yeah, but I think we sidetracked majorly. <laughs> Major well, you know, sidetrack. it happens. Yeah, because we're, we were talking more about, okay, well, we the standards in which you're trying to hold Mr. Batman over, um, but you have to come and appeal to the biblical worldview in order to actually uh, ver to actually author like give authority to that standard. So what? That's what I mean. It's, it's for you so? to make this appeal, you have to say the Bible is true. I agree with the Bible. Yeah. Well, you agree. Okay, so you think that Jesus is God? No, I I think that uh, to be loving uh, means to be patient, kind, not to envy, not to boast, not to be proud, not to yeah, dishonor others. Thirteen. Yeah, I agree. I agree with those sentiments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but okay, but you can't just sit here and say it's the Bible's true, but I only agree with part of it. That's oh, only, sure only I can. part of it's true. Because Just if, like if you, it's not all true, then it's it's false on itself as a whole. It's a package. It's it's not like a piece of it. It's a it's a whole pa well, package that's of something. Your understanding bigger. of it, I guess. That's I just don't take that view. Um, well, they're, and they're I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. Like Christianity is false. I'm like, well, what do you mean? What what does Christianity mean to be true or false? Uh, and if well, if uh, yeah, the main bottom line is Jesus is God. That if you do not believe that he is the eternal God, Yahweh, you will die in your sins. Okay. So, yeah, so, yeah, I guess, so what? I, I So I can say, you know, like when I read the Bible, whatever, there are things that I uh, agree with and I think are are true and speak to to things that are true, and uh, and there's things that I just I don't think are true. Um, so I I th I think it's a bit bizarre that to take a position, and I don't know if you necessarily take a literalist position, like literally everything in the Bible is true. Um, well, you know, you, or if you it's like it depends on the situation. What's that? 
you know what happens when you pick and choose arbitrarily and you don't actually accept it all as true if 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 i take things as arbitrary yeah let's get to the so what yeah then it's just arbitrarily true that's that's all it is if it's not all true it's arbitrarily true like if, if that if your profession of the bible is that pieces of it are true then how do you how do you verify what how are you verifying that those true pieces are true and those false pieces are how do false? i verify if being kind is a good thing i mean yeah why should somebody be kind if, uh, i if mean it's like is it like how do you determine if pain is painful God and it, well it, okay I, i'm saying this why is there some standard like being kind not causing pain such other things uh why why is that standard exist just because uh somebody feels icky about it not existing or not being uplifted because i feel icky about abortion and i think it should be outlawed and banned and people should be um well yeah there should be punishment enacted on people who commit abo uh, um, abortifacians uh, abortifacias but other people they're going to say no that's that's not wrong just because you feel that it's icky it doesn't make it wrong mm -hmm. and so now we're we're at this at this crux of you pick and choose arbitrarily what's true and what's false and i'm asking you well what's the verification that those things are true or false because now all it is is it's 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 still like it's 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 just being comported through your mind your mind is the standard of which what is true and false rather than right. god saying it's true and it being true because god has said it's true because his word is true and you agree because you have to like think about what why god says something is is true or false and you think and you agree that that is a good thing I, yeah i come i come up but that's I that's the part i don't think him. people are willing to bite the bullet on like you still have well, to I, I, agree with god that that is good or bad i i, I agree with god and i think more than other i i believe in the prophecy of ezekiel god causes his people to fear him to obey him this is part of the new covenant promise is he causes them to walk in his ordinances it's it's, it's called uh, uh it's the doctrines of sanctification that that people um supplied by god's power and ability that they are actually effectually going to believe certain things are true and they're actually going to walk through like it's true Sure. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just going to come down to the so what, right? Like there's things that we are all arbitrary on. You're probably not going to agree to that, but uh, so what? That's the world we find. We have to get along. We have to compromise. We have to negotiate with each other. That's how we come up with stuff. Yeah, That's but how we I, have saying, interesting okay, relationships. You, you're, trying to, you're trying to make the so what argument against me. and No, it's not an argument. I'm just asking you. I'm literally asking, so what? I, if I have an arbitrary standard, so what? I mean, I don't have to follow it. Yeah, I mean, same thing. I don't have to follow it. There's no, there's no authority that you hold that, right. objectively speaking, above me. I am obligated to follow it. Uh, I have to, you know, I, that it's true in of itself because you said it. None of those things exist or matter. Yeah, uh, it's it's just you saying that it does exist. It does matter. We should treat people kindly, which you're going to get a mass of people who agree with you. You know why? Because they agree with this standard they're they're image bearers they they have certain uh proclivities in which they agree with but also everybody has certain things that are their favorite sins and they will not agree with the law of god yep yep so uh, the yeah i guess the 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 head scratcher mode is like so if we agree that like it's it's good to be kind then we agree. So like, let's agree to be kind, but you're going to say, I don't have to be kind to you because you don't have some ultimate standard. No, that's, no, that's I'm the part that seems that. absolutely I'm saying, bonkers. I'm saying you can't justify to me why I have to sure be kind I can. to you. So when somebody mistreats you. Because I want you to be kind to me. You. Yes. So and you, and we, we walked all the way back through. You said, if you, you were in my house, you should take off your shoes. Yeah, I agree. So I I'm asking you to metaphorically take of off your shoes and be kind, but now you're saying now I don't have to. Well, I, I have, but I, I appeal to my biblical worldview 
in order to actually do that. Like I, I, I sit here and say, well, he's the authority of this house. He has ownership property. Imagine we're in an age where people don't care about that. They don't think it. you actually should own what you own. And so, um, yeah, at the same time, they're, they're going to think you're crazy and ridiculous for giving ordinances, like taking off their shoes. They think they can just come and take what they want. Some people think that they can just go into stores and take what they want. They, they don't have to respect any rule of law or pro personal property. They are a law unto themselves. So you're going to have all your mixed mash of individuals who disagree with your standard of ethics, and you are going to have to sit there and justify to them why they should. Because, look, it's easy to me. I already agree with certain principles that you're already going to appeal to me with. But I already rec recognize uh, that there's an inconsistency, that you don't actually have an ultimate appeal to a god who says that we should treat people correctly and with honor, respect, and dignity. And you don't actually hold a worldview that says that people have innate dignity. You hold a worldview that says, well, if people are, um, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the gener the spawns of uh, of natural selection, spawns of of uh, space dust, in which everything all of a sudden came into existence, and we came from essentially rocks, uh, non living organisms, sure. rather than we came from yeah. a divine being who has divine ordinances, who says that we are made in His image, and that we have to treat people uh, fairly because of that basis. We have to treat people with kindness, dignity, respect. Uh, because you don't hold that worldview, you have no actual appeal. You have to contradict your worldview and say, no, we should treat people with kindness, dignity, dignity and respect. Um, but you, I, I don't know. Is it innate that I have to do this? Do people have innate dignity and respect in your worldview? And by what standard? Uh, I mean, to some certain extent, yeah. I feel like there is some innate uh, part of us. I mean, I mean, we could just go with pain, right? Like, it's innate to human beings that we feel pain. No, I'm talking about dignity and respect. Why should I respect your pain? Like, for example, if, if it pains somebody to not steal um, something they covet from their neighbor, why should we respect that pain? I, I, I can sit here and say I don't respect that pain because it's theft and it transgresses on the law of God. Uh, sorry, I lost that. I lost what you were saying there. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying you have well, an individual who says it pains me not to have something my neighbor holds, so I'm going to take it. Why should we care about his pain over the pain of the individual who, you know, is going to be obviously he somebody's playing to steal his stuff and he's going to feel pain afterwards? Why should we respect the initial pain? Because I don't. I don't respect the initial pain just because he has less or doesn't have something his neighbor holds. Uh, I believe that what he's doing is theft sure. and that he yeah. should be held accountable and that his yeah. pain doesn't it, matter. Sure. And I, again, I think it's just, this is where these conversations just boil down to some simplistic thing where it's like, Oh, we're just matter in motion. And so there were, well, but yeah, it's like, yes, pain is part of it, but there's the emotions of it. There is the history yeah, of, you know, the, the, the hard work that I did to earn the money to buy the thing. And now this guy comes and just takes yeah. it. And so well, there's a whole host of, work to get it. Yeah, there's a bank, whole host I of reasons why stealing is wrong, um, that I could appeal to or just, and a whole host of reasons. But, and to me, it seems like at some point we would all agree on that and say, yes. And I feel like that's good enough. But for you, it seems important that it has to have some ultimate terminating point so that um it you is. can say massive um so but that's what to me it's just like okay I'm, but I'm like we are if we agree that again going back to the kindness thing like why are if we both agree on this like why are you looking for some further justification for us to interact if we've already agreed and our our reasons are overlapping enough to interact with each other to act in such an accord I'm calling out a contradiction. I'm saying that you don't have the right to actually hold that somebody should treat you with dignity and respect and shouldn't uh, treat you with gentleness and kindness. Oh, well, that's your opinion. You, you don't man. actually, because, because innately, I mean, what, what, what authorizes that? Or what, 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 what authorizes that somebody has to, has to treat you with dignity, honor, and respect as a human being. 
I mean, though they don't have to. Uh, I would like them to, and yeah, and like for respect, it, it, there's there's a mutuality to it, right? Like, yeah. if I'm a jerk, then yeah, there's no reason you should probably like why I don't want to interact with Mister Batman. He, he he doesn't command respect. Well, not to all people. I think I think he he's not to all most people. Like, uh, might, if yeah. if you don't I, placate I, to him, I, let's just yeah. put it that way. Yeah, I, I would say yeah. I, for, for a fair it's amount of people, people like that, there are characters that not like interacting with him, and they make it known. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm I'm asking you because it's a little bit contradictory to say that there's no <laughs> ultimate standard that he doesn't have to actually treat you the way that you're requesting. But you're going to sit there and act like he actually does need to treat you the way that you're requesting, that he shouldn't interact. He doesn't with need to. I would like him not to. And I'm, like I'm appealing to. the reason why he should not. And I'm using his own standard as to an appeal. Yeah. Because that's where we overlap. I have, I have oh, the yeah, desire. Yeah. I, I, I can just say I have the arbitrary the desire. I have an arbitrary desire for someone to act kindly towards me. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. You want the fruit of the Christian worldview, but you you don't actually accept Christ as Lord. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you just want to, you know, claim that you guys have like some kind of kingship over kindness and love and sadness and. That's not me. Right. The Bible. Sorry. Oh, it's God. But you're the one. You're you're the one saying uh, like I I can't talk to God. You're the one telling me what God is saying. So you can talk well, to I mean, God. It's 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 very public what God is saying. It's in the Bible. Sure, but you, you're going to have your own interpretation. You're going to ha- you know like just like you were saying like there are folks out there that have some completely different idea as to what <laughs> Christianity or whatever God <laughs> like, or yeah yeah so, uh, salvation. Yeah, salvation. Yes, there are differing views of salvation. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's so I can take things. your word, what you think the word says, but then I talk to the next guy and says, no, you're actually wrong. Well, well hold on. I was just talking to Fit yeah, though. That, that, told me that. that follows through with all of life. Um, if, right. If you said, yeah, it's arbitrary. I contradict what you say. Well, it's, it's not arbitrary. Um, because I think, it, I think it's very clear in certain spots and, but you do have certain theologians of certain pro- proclivities that would say, well, the Bible says, uh, that homosexuality is bad. And of course you have certain theologians with, of course, certain sexual proclivities who come to di- different conclusions than the mainstream traditional thought of, yeah, this has been, or this has been decreed by God to be wrong. Okay. But, but we argue based on, on what the text says, we don't argue based on what we interpret from the text. Okay, so I guess maybe let's just get back to like, therefore what? So you're telling me yeah. I can't be offended or call somebody to behave in in any kind of way because I have some kind of contradictory uh, ultimate belief or lack thereof. Yeah, I mean, if if you already hold a a, a stone that says. Um, I have no innate value. No one owes me. I don't hold that. So that's something you can't put on me. Well, okay. Um, is there some, well, okay. Because earlier you admitted, yeah, he doesn't have to. You already admitted that. Right. He doesn't have. Yeah, we we have free will, right? With respect and dignity. Yeah. You said there's no ultimate standard. There's nothing, no one owes you respect, dignity, honor, any of that, even life. No one owes you any of these things to treat you well. No one owes you. You already Mm. hold that view. But then you're going to have to step into the Christian worldview and say, well, based on the Christian worldview standards, he is doing wrong. But inadvertently, you're also saying that there's some ultimate standard of hypocrisy that he cannot transgress. Where are you going to have to reach for that? Oh, the Christian worldview. Hypocrisy is now wrong. Uh, I don't have to reach to the Christian worldview. Again, like to, to, to pain. I don't have to reach to the Christian worldview to understand or know what pain is or what kindness is. And I brought up 
I brought up examples earlier. There's individuals that are pained that they cannot do something, do not have something. Why should we validate their pain? Uh, I'm just, uh, we don't have to go to the situations where it, it, you get the little gotchas. I'm just saying like, I can understand kindness. I don't have to appeal to the Christian worldview because the Christian worldview isn't the only worldview that has an account for kindness. Um, I, I would say it, it holds a consistent account for kindness. Uh, for example, if I if I were a um, a person who who followed Plato, which is a mistake in itself, because the foundation of all of Plato's ethical claims is his entire worldview. He admits it's based on mythology. It's a complete myth. He has to appeal to that. Um, he, he it's it's equivalent to appealing to like divine mystery, uh, just saying that we we just don't know. Um, there's no real basis in which I'm actually saying certain things. Uh, I, I'm, I mean, it's mythical. I'm making it up as I go. Plato argues that as his foundation. Um, we can look to other worldviews like Hinduism. Hinduism says, well, uh, unfortunately for Hinduism, for you to even recognize unkindness and kindness and not recognize oneness, you're out of Brahman. You're, you're not in Nirvana. You're, you're contradicting the Hindu worldview. You have to look at things in oneness. If you're not, you're not actually reaching nirvana. And that's what Hinduism ascribes to it to follow. But obviously that is contradictory because Hindus, they look at things in categories as well. They don't look at things in oneness. And that's the issue with like things like pantheism because that's the oneness that it's trying to hold together with their worldview. And so uh, we, we can obviously see from these worldviews, they're self-contradictory uh, in on themselves. And some people, they might tout it. So, I don't can you just like lay out simplistically what the, the contradiction is? Okay, so Hinduism, they... No, with my worldview. With, with or your not worldview. my well, worldview, but what? Because you have no idea you. what my worldview is. You're, but you're, what? Okay. But what I've an said is that is contradictory. That we are actually created by God, who created us in His image, and which we have to afford people respect, dignity, and honor based on that image. Sorry, what was my contradiction specifically with? Well, I, I kind of assume. Are you are you a Christian? Are you an uh, atheist, agnostic? I am a Christian apostate. A Christian apostate. So you're you're an atheist. Uh, sure. If that's helpful labeled for you, sure. You're, you're against the world, the Christian worldview, essentially you're against the, Christian uh, no, God. not against it. Okay. Well, I mean, like, 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 let's just say specifically Jesus is God. People are obligated to follow and worship Yahweh. Uh, the, that's what you're against. And you're against the existence of any no. God. I'm not, I'm not against people following God. No. Okay. Um, well, you, you just don't believe this God exists. Uh, yeah, I currently don't believe that this God exists, correct? Okay. Yeah, but but now you have to really supplant that with something else. What? I mean, where do humans come to be then? If you don't have God, a creator that created people in his image, likeness, that we have to now innately afford people dignity, honor, and respect, uh, where do we come from? Where do we come from? I mean... To be pedantic, we come from our parents, who come from our well, parents, true, and then true. so on and so forth. Origins some of, of species and infinite uh, regress. So we just come from an infinite regress. No action. So, so it literally, just my uh, matter in motion. No, not just. This is, this is your tendency to just pancake everything down to some simplistic, like stuff. Materialism. Yeah, we, I mean, I could say well, chemical, I like chemicals. Right? Things. I have to really, I can't, I can't pick at everything individually. I, I have to, I have to necessarily look at things in categories and recognize what the worldview actually is. You hold a worldview that doesn't include God or. Uh, well, it includes God. Okay, it includes God. So you believe right. in a God. 
Uh, I don't believe in one, but my worldview includes a God that I did believe in and that lots of people do, and there's books about gods and God. And so yeah, there's this concept not, not of that God, God that does true. exist. So yes, not I that believe that God in God. Is true. Uh, well, it depends on, there are, like, as you know, there are things in the Bible that I believe are true. Now, I do I believe this thing exists by, by the way that the, the Bible describes this yeah. God? No, I don't believe it. It, it is an ontological being. Yeah, doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Um, but, it but the concept does. In words, so, in, story, in a in sense, concept, it does. Sure, but doesn't exist in essence. Ontological. Like I would just say ontologically. Yeah. There is no ontological yeah. being. I I believe yeah, there but, is no ontological yeah, being. That's, that, that's what I mean. Within your worldview, mm -hmm. this God only exists in word doesn't really exist in thought in word yeah yeah so so with that notion and if that's the only god that exists in thought and, and word and yeah just in thought and word then on that notion on that basis you don't believe that there's actually a god um ontologically existing you think that we came from, well we're eternal beings right like we're eternal matter that's been in motion forever because you appeal to the infinite regress. Um, um, I, I must. Sorry. Yeah. What, I, I think that's what you just said. I, I might, you might've misinterpreted what I meant. Uh, I just meant like a seemingly infinite regress when it comes to like humanity coming to be. Um, I, I, I'm not strongly, uh, uh, you know, evolution is the thing, man, but I'm, I'm, that's pretty much what I think. So, but I, but whether or not, you know, like, all matter has uh, existed or came to be in the uh, Big Bang, so to speak. I, I, I am very much agnostic on all that. Yeah, but and hold on, uh, with, real quick, just as a quick aside, uh, Taco, yeah. are you there? Hello. Can you bell see him? I can't hear. Oh, him. Uh, uh, here. He's lighting up, but we can't hear him. Uh. I just ask if you're recording this, if you ask permission first. Uh, so anyway, uh, I don't care. yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Well, I do to me. I, okay. 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 I feel like one should know if they're being recorded or not. So do I. So I will go on record saying I do not give permission for this to be recorded. Okay. That's fair. Anyway, go yeah, on with the course. I'm of anything I say, but, uh, I agree with, uh, our, beg that uh, we have a right to know when we're being uh, recorded and to give consent or not give consent. And I believe Go it's ahead. a term. May or may not be terms of service, but sorry. It's the law in America uh, if you go uh, from people from state to state. And I agree with that standard arbitrarily. <laughs> <laughs> See, he got us back on task. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I do not believe there is the Christian God that is ontologically existing within our space time. Yeah. So you appeal to to us boiled down to, I mean, if you had to really critique your own worldview, mm -hmm. you would probably reduce us down to being just the same as the animals. We're just, we came from the same origins. Uh, maybe rock sediments. I don't know. Um, as far as we know, we came from uh, African apes and fish. That w those were our previous ancestors. Possibly, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, that's that's the current evolutionary consensus um, about origins of species. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, from that basis. I mean, what do we do? We do we now what not eat fish certain types of fish that we have to actually hold ethical standards for them as well i mean what why do we have to it's it's a little contradictory to say that we have the same origins we're all the same we're just a big melting pot of sort of like the hinduism uh sameness oneness mm. same origins and mystically this this standard exists that there's respect and dignity that should be and afforded 
you're going to maybe tell me that arbitrarily you feel like it should be afforded. It's not an ontological thing that it should be afforded, in which case you have no basis to actually sit here and condemn Mr. Batman on his conduct because uh, you're, you're going to have to appeal to hypocrisy. Uh, you're, you're calling out hypocrisy. You're going to have to make an appeal why hypocrisy is wrong. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, just definitionally itself, it's wrong. Well, yeah, I think I think hypocrisy is wrong, but there's a there's a reason and basis I can believe hypocrisy is wrong, and it's because God has revealed it and said hypocrites, hypocrisy is an abomination to Him. Unequal weights and measure, those things are an abomination. Why are they an abomination? Well, he's he's deemed it. He it's against his immutable character for you to be inconsistent. That to him is abominable. Yeah, to be inconsistent, right? Like that's that's a standard. I yeah, I think, right? Yeah, but but if we if we were people um, now, people that came from fish, uh, uh, we we don't we don't really hold these ethical values over fish and monkeys. But they're not treating certain monkeys right and treating certain. Well, we might pop them like with a bullet mm-hmm. if they don't treat certain monkeys right um in certain cases if they're violent they attack humans we'll we'll shoot them uh generally speaking though we're we're actually pretty light-handed when it comes to people and people don't wish for the death sentence on uh people nowadays even rapists and murderers they think that um nowadays i mean we're we're at the stage i'm i'm sure you're well aware where people think it within a rape case uh the the person in the rape case that deserves to be executed is actually the conceived child not not the rapist they think that he should walk scot free well not scot free he should go to jail he should be able to keep his life and go to jail but the conceived child they should be executed and so that's where we are nowadays so i'm just wondering from your world you how do you actually contend against those ideas when you hold a value ahead of time that we are not made in the image of god we're not innately afforded respect dignity um even things like the pursuit of happiness life and liberty like things that are like american values which Mm -hmm. i could contend well they they had a basis the founders had a basis in which to argue these things the ones that didn't or they were just being inconsistent with their own worldview as well um how do you contend against these things? Um, I mean, again, it's, it's to sim- simply boil things down to like, we either made in the image of God or we're just matter in motion that came from frogs and space dust. Yeah, do you accept uh, it's that just, dichotomy? I mean, no, I just think it's so like, it's so simple. It's like a kindergarten way to like, it is, it is, to, it's to post. Math, it's funny. But like, it's, it's yeah, like it's saying really like, uh, funny. cars evolved from, you know, wagons and therefore why should cars go 90 miles an hour? Because they just evolved from wagons that could only go two miles an hour. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. like we, we have complex emotions and we have consciousness that is, you know, the way our brain works and we can think about things uh, and reflect and whatnot is just patently different than trees and rocks and, and, and butterflies and whatnot. And so that's why we have all this wonderful thing that humanity has, you know, like well, ethics, yeah, morals and whatnot. So we recognize these things. And I, I think these things, these things are actually proofs and evidence, even to the unbeliever that God infallibly exists, but you with your worldview, you have to even address the fact that emotions, um, and thoughts and feelings, these things are just tied to electronic signals within the brain, uh, certain organic uh, chemical reactions that go off. Yeah, that explains in your, how in, it happens. In your, yeah, in, Internally, yeah. And you have to contend with the idea that it's just reduced down to matter still. Uh, it, it, that, not reduced, it, it explains it. That's that's the well, problem. Yeah, I think sure. that's the language that just makes it so easy to be like, look how dumb this is. It just reduces. No, it just explains yeah, I mean, it. But it, it's just it. But it's it's just as like um. I, I like to bring up this example. Nobody. Why why are we condemning the chemical reactions of a of a individual, 
who goes and they, they commit a mass genocide or mass murder against a, a civilian population, why do we, why, why can you sit there and condemn them and not condemn the, the, the grenade that is actually doing the, the detonation that that's actually the tool in which that is killing these people. You don't pull a grenade that fires off. You don't punish those chemical reactions. You punish the chemical reactions that look like you. Yeah. Cause of, you know, what we believe is free will, right? Like that we are agents that have the, the ability to make choices. Well, I mean, <laughs> arguably, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if an atheist can really make that argument to say that people have, um, autonomy, uh, a level of autonomy that does not conform to chemical reactions that are firing off internally, like stimuli based on your environment, chemical reactions are produced off of that stimuli in which you make a response to that environment. Why mm -hmm. do you condemn people who um, all respond a certain way to their environment? It's reduced down to a chemical reaction. You don't condemn grenades when they go off. Uh, and pull them into court as if they'd done something wrong. You pull people in there. Or like with, with an animal, you don't condemn an animal for maul, mauling a person. You may, you know, execute them to prevent it, but you don't sit there and try to give logical, reasonable argumentation uh, against an animal. This is why it shouldn't be doing this to people. Right, because we recognize those things can't operate the same way we can. Yeah, but it's an inconsistency in the worldview in where you're not no, it's equally, not equally well, you're not equally condemning all chemical reactions that are happening within the world. Well, that's because you think we just reduce things down to chemical and I'm telling you we don't. Or I you don't. don't. But it's arbitrary. And I'm saying it's inconsistent. Um, it's not arbitrary. It is because of how the ontology of humans work. Uh yeah. Uh, I, I, I tend to, I, I do believe that that's how humans work. And I think that your speech, when you appeal to certain things like um, uh, that uh, people have functioning minds, that that's going to, that's going to um, pull some people in and they're going to agree with you because they accept those merits. You, you accept that merit in on itself, but it requires me to grant you that merit in which um, you're actually saying that this person is autonomous. This person has a functioning mind in which we can actually convict them. He has there are certain morals and ethics that he has to follow, and we condemn if he doesn't follow. You don't hold the same standard equally across all chemical reactions. Well, yeah, it's because you're forcing this whole, we're all just chemical reactions. So that's, I think that's just where you're just going to always disconnect. I'm not forcing it. That's you could, you could just be a com, uh, compatibilist to talk about like moral desert. So I, like think, I think I think one way to look at it is, I mean, like just more from like, how do we make appeals to things or what's our justification or something like any given, like if you just, uh, I don't know if you have kids, but like if I you did. even just think about child rearing, like when you try to help kids learn how to operate in the world, like when you say, Hey, don't touch that stove. Um, do you start with, because God is the foundation of the world that makes heat and creates solid objects and blah, blah, blah. Or do you, or do you give the reasons why, why any given action is, oh, is I think it's, not um, the, the correct way to go? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a reduced down to, uh, because I said, so, um, I may give logical argumentation. Uh, you think it's reduced to, because I said so? I, I, I do. I, I, I've told my wife, the standard is because I said so. Okay, so might the makes standard. right. There's a there's a reason as to no there there's a reason. Well, I'm not saying might makes right. No, I'm saying the child. Yeah, I mean you did in itself Correct. obligated by God to follow what I say, regardless of whatever reason I give. As long as I don't transgress against the law of God. As long as I'm not, I'm not just trying to make my child mad. I'm not. I'm trying to lead my child to still waters. Uh, as long as I'm actually. Uh, doing as God says, I'm within my rights. Um, but nowhere am I required or obligated. I may do it just because in certain situations, but bottom line is uh, I'm, I'm not obligated to do these things. They have to follow simply because I said so. Oh, 
Okay. And we wait, did talk about this well, earlier. We did, I think we did we're talk done, about then. this earlier. Um, uh, authorities. Do we follow authorities? Do we yield to authorities? How do we interact with authorities? How do we interact with authorities when they contradict God's law or well, when they you have, have to arbitrary authority? Wait, what? You have to recognize authority, authority. and and yeah, believe that that person actually is an authority and is yeah, worthy is of being an authority. Yeah, like like do, do I now have authority over every woman, or is it my wife I have authority over? Uh, according to God's word, I have authority over my wife, and within the, the structure of a church, when it comes to church things, uh, women are not allowed to have authority over men. So that these are standards okay. that are given. Well, that one's arbitrary, but yeah, that's not arbitrary. That's a that's in the, that's in the scriptures. Do, does every are, single Christian believe that to follow the natural, uh, the natural, uh, I I would say the natural law that women do not have authority over men generally. Um, me as a man, I don't get to flex authority over women um, generally, but within the confines of a church. I, I have an authority that's over some women, not all women, some women, uh, if they're working under me. But as far as, uh, uh, you know, the, the rest of the women, generally speaking, they're under the authority of the deacons, the pastor, um, elders, and such forth. But, yeah, like I said, do they have to recognize my authority? No, but they don't have an authority over me. So we're talk we earlier we talked about authority structures. Now, just because I, I am an authority, does that mean I get to do as I please? No, because there is an authority above me that mm -hmm. says that, well, there's a standard that you have to follow even as an authority. Yeah. So no, it's not just I have free reign to do whatever I want in child rearing. Uh, no, I guess my point was when when you're talking to children, the more effective way in my mind at a certain point, right? Like when they're young, yes, do it because I said so, uh, is well, more effective. Older, but at some point older, you have to start giving reasons. Got, Dad said. Sorry, what? Yeah. The, the standard, even when they're older is dad said, it doesn't matter what logical argumentation I give them, what, what, um, wise counsel or reason I give them. It doesn't matter. It's because I said so. And that's what Yeah, they and I I think that's to. why it's flawed that's why that's flawed in my mind. Like touching the hot stove is not is is not uh, uh, incorrect so to speak because you said so. It's wrong because they're going to burn themselves. Well, it's it's not That's a sin. the standard. It's burning. It, it, well, technically <laughs> so, well, harming their bodies is a sin. Um overt yeah. uh, it, it, most importantly <sighs> Trying, trying, attempting to do harm to your body purposefully is a sin. But um, as far as any command that comes from me, it's automatically authorized. They have to yield to me because it's not that I've arbitrarily taken over the household and birthed them and decided this on my own. It's that God says so. And even if you're acting in anger? Uh, if I'm acting in anger, I'm out of line. But do they still have to listen to what you say? Yeah, they don't. They don't have to listen to every single individual ordinance that I have to say. I, I even have. So how would they here. know which which commands to to honor or not? Then uh, scripture, the ones that do not transgress against God's law. Mm -hmm. So you're not the authority then. Um, no, I am an authority. I'm an authority. I'm not the ultimate authority. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but, but they, so this is the point I'm getting, like, you're still, you're still choosing to go with that authority or not. Um, so your children, well, yeah, they, they, they their, their make, authority, it, you're not make, their authority because. Every, whenever following an authority, yeah, you have to make an authority over you. Like for me, I, you can't say you're a Christian without Jesus being an authority over you. But, um. So what uh, I'm getting at is if you tell your kids that they should listen to you, that's not the actual reason of why they should listen to you. No, it's because God said. That's why. Well, I mean, again, to, to be pedantic, God didn't say don't touch the stove. 
you no, know, God didn't say don't touch the stove, but I said don't touch the stove, and it doesn't contradict God's law. So they have to yield. That's the standard there. All right. Hey, I guess, uh, you know, we're just seeing things differently. That's okay. I oh, mean, you shouldn't mind. even disagree okay. with this part, though. Like, he's you know not I mean? the... Like, uh, what do you get? Uh, He's not the ultimate authority. He's an yeah. authority. Yeah. I mean, you, you do you have kids? I do. Okay. Do you think that the basis in which your kids listen to you is because you've given them this long scripted argumentation about yeah. why they should and shouldn't do certain things? Or is it because it reduced down to because you said so? And, of course, you may have reasons. But the main basis in which you think that they should listen to you is because dad said so. No. No. You, no. you don't want them to say, listen to you? No, so when, when my kids argue with each you. other, I think they should not do that because I think they should be in a good relationship with it. And that's an inappropriate yeah, way to, to be in relationship with each other. So so imagine this. your kid, You step up and say, hey, stop arguing, Timmy. I, I don't know what your kids' names are. But um, you, st you step in as the authority. You say, this is wrong. You're to act this way. This is not right. This is not how you treat each other. And they come up and they debate you on the topic and they say, so what? What do you think happens next? Uh, so, yeah, if we if, if they def if, if they disagree with what we're what we're telling them, then, yes, we have different tactics of how we handle that situation. Yeah, but but you're, you're not sitting you're, you're sitting there in in the back of your mind going, I'm the authority in the room. This kid does not have the actual right. No, I'm not the authority in the room on that situation. The, the action the, that they should not be doing or the action they should have been doing instead is what the quote-unquote authority is. Yeah, okay. I, I'm talking about like arbitrary rules. Like even down to bedtime, you tell them it's bedtime. Mm -hmm. So what? what, what why should they go to bed at a certain time? Because, because they they don't get good sleep, they grow up, uh, wake up uh, yes, grumpy, so, and so what? What? So, yeah, so what? So that is just yeah. not good I mean, for your health, so, and so, so we are going to home, guide you along life. Are all <laughs> issues an open debate with your children? Um, are they an open debate? Well, no, they don't debate with us because. Well, okay, sure, but I'm saying if they do. Mm -hmm. then they can just sit there and say, I don't have to yield. I'll do what yes, I want. Yes, if they become obstinate, yes. Th certainly there is the, because I said so, is in, my, in the back that's pocket, That's what right? I mean. That's what I mean. But that's, that, that's just powering over I'm somebody. I'm saying that you're being unjust or cruel to your kids because you, you reduce it down to... Yeah, the that, that is the they most ineffective yield. way to so. get the change you want to see. Well, the, is the to power the over people. Yeah, there but is, I'm saying there's an ontological right, there's no, reason why they yield to you. Wait, well, there's a few things that might be going. I think, well, there might be a slight equivocation. I think Ardbeg, he's trying to say that, okay, well, um, the reason that, like, you, it, it sounds like uh, FIPDA, you're trying to say that there's a causal reason. Like, maybe the causal reason that they do certain things is because he said so. Maybe there's, like, a causal explanation there. But he's more no, so I'm talking about... an ontological reason. They are doing it because he said so. Um, yeah, and like, it doesn't yeah. mean that everything that he says so is okay, and that they yeah, should participate in it. I'm saying oh, yeah. the, arb the arbitrary things, the things that are good and right, and that are actually to help. Yeah, but those I understand, but things, like, the basis, like, the foundation, are going to be reduced down to. I said so. Okay, but no, but listen to me. Like, so, but to be clear, correct me if I'm wrong. You're just saying something like. Um, like him saying, telling them, or him instructing them causes them to behave in certain ways. That's what you're saying, right? Uh, I th I think every well, every parent has an effect, but yeah. th that's not the bait. That's not the main contention. Okay. So then, okay. So now, if you're not merely offering the causal explanation, then if if you're di both disputing over like what sort of what's the reason as to why they should do that, then I would agree with what Ardberg is saying. It's not because merely because he said so. That's not the reason why they should do it. Right. Yeah. What are they going to learn when they bicker yeah. with each right, other? Right, really quick. Are you are you a father before you step in? I'm not a father. No. Okay. I yeah. I think I think on this topic, this is complete. It's a completely different when you have. A I think 
I think it's just like an ethics issue. Look, like, of course, it's not merely because he says so. 